multitasking, uh, multiprocessing, and multi-threading. Now there's three interesting words for you, all starting with the word multi. Well, what do they all mean and, and what difference does it make? Well, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explained. And if you wanna find out more about those three words, please let me explain. Okay, first of all, there can be some overlap in how people use these words, and that's okay. But if we're talking about strict definition, let's look at these three words in order and see what they mean to us. So the first word is multitasking, and we use that about people, don't we? You know, he's very good at multitasking, she's very good at multitasking. And of course, we're not actually very good at multitasking. You can really only do one thing at once because we only have one pair of hands. But, and of course, it's the same with a computer. It's got, if it's a single core CPU, it can only do one thing at a time. However, it gives the appearance that it's doing two things at once. And the way it does that is it gives a little bit of time to each of the tasks it has to achieve. So if you're running, you know, kind of like on your, uh, on your computer, a single core computer, and we'll talk more about single core computers in a moment, but if you're running kind of on a computer, then you might be running kind of like Microsoft Word, and you might also have the Chrome web browser open, and kind of a new email comes into Gmail, and yet you can still carry on typing in Microsoft Word. You get the appearance that you're doing two things at once, and that's because the computer gives a slice of its time to each program uh, in, a, in turn. And the programs are demanding the most uh, use from the CPU, get more time, which is why if you have a program that's doing something really, really heavy, uh, work, then the other programs appear to be quite slow when you try to click on them or try to use them. And the way operating systems do that is using a system called preemptive multitasking. And that basically means that the, the kernel in the very heart of the operating system, whether that's Windows, whether that's Linux, whether that's Mac OS, it says, okay, now you're getting a slice of time. Then it says, I don't care what you're doing now, I'm gonna stop you from what you're doing. I'm giving your slice of time to somebody else. And that's preemptive multitasking. There is a different version called cooperative multitasking. If you fancy a whole video on multitasking, uh, you know, like cooperative multitasking or preemptive multitasking and kind of like real-time operating system, do tell me in the comments below and maybe I'll think about doing a video just about the concepts of multitasking. But basically the operating system divides up the time among each program and if it switches between them quick enough, it looks like they're both uh, working at the same time. Now in a little while, we're gonna go over to a couple of Raspberry Pis and one of the Raspberry Pis we're gonna using is the Raspberry Pi Zero, and it's a single core ARM uh, version six uh, CPU, which means it can only literally do one thing at a time. It can do one instruction, then the next instruction, the next instruction, and we'll see how multitasking comes into that when we start to run some test programs on that in a moment. Now, related to multitasking is multi-threaded. Now, multi-threading is what happens when you have parts inside the same program, inside the same task, that actually want to try to do things in parallel. Now again, we are running this on a single core computer. It can't do things in parallel. It can only do things uh, like the appearance of doing things in parallel. So the scheduler gives one thread a bit of time, then it gives another thread a bit of time. And actually, again, it looks like the program is achieving two things at the same time. So a good example would be, let's say something like Android, if it was running on a single core uh, smartphone, like it was way back before we had multi uh, core smartphones, then the GUI, the user interface, is being updated in one thread, and maybe you're downloading from the network with another thread, and it looks like that the GUI is still kind of, you know, uh, interactive and fluid, and actually the download's happening, but what's really happening is that the CPU is switching between the two threads, but the point about a thread is they're both inside the same task, they're both inside the same process, therefore they share memory, they share the networking, they share files, and they all contain within that neat little process package that gives the appearance that the process itself can do multiple things at once. And again, we're going to go over to a Raspberry Pi in a minute and show you a multi-threaded program running on a multitasking uh, operating system. And then the final variant there is multi-processing. And multi-processing, it means you've got more than one CPU core. So today, when you're using a PC, it might be using a thing called SMP, symmetric multi-processing, which basically means a dual core or a quad core, or however many cores you've got in your processor. And actually, those processors can do more than one thing at once. So you can have a program like you know, Microsoft Word that's running on one core, and actually, at the same physical time, Chrome might be running on another core, and it is actually doing two things at once. And that's the difference between when you're running on a multi-core and a single core. Okay, let's go over to the Raspberry Pis and see what we can discover. 
Okay, so here we are on a Raspberry Pi Zero. It is a single core computer. Uh, and on the left here, we have a window running a program called Top, which shows you how much CPU is being used by which programs. And here on the right, I've got two windows where I can run some programs. Now let's run a program here where it tries to calculate 250,000 uh, prime numbers using trial by division, and it does it 10 times sequentially, one after the other. So let's just run that and see what happens. Notice here on the left-hand side, the program is using 90% plus of the CPU, and the CPU for the whole system is over 90%. Okay, now that took about 8.8 .8 seconds to run. Now I have another program here, which uh, is exactly the same thing, but it's actually got 10 threads. So run, rather than running the 10 programs sequentially, it actually runs 10 threads and tries to calculate all these prime numbers. Now let's see what happens. So again, here on top, we can see the program is using over 90% of the CPU. The CPU, the system is 98, 96%. And you can see here that it, again, it took up roughly the same amount of time, 8.8 .8 seconds. So on a single core machine, we've seen now how we can run a multi-threaded program and actually it doesn't change anything. It still takes exactly the same amount of time and there was no speed benefit, no performance benefit to it. Now, interestingly, to show us what multitasking is like, we can run both of those programs uh, in two twice. So we're going to run it in these two windows. So we can see if I can get them going as quick as we can. There we go. Now, notice here we've got both running and they're both using roughly 50% of the CPU because they're having to share the resources between them, whereas the system CPU level is up in the high 90s. It just went to 100% there a second. So the overall system is still using the CPU as much as it can. And notice here, it's finished now, and both of them took over 17 seconds. Well, of course, it was 8.8 .8 seconds for a single run of it. So if we're running two lots of it, well, it takes twice as long. And the poor old CPU just has to do what it can. And this is multitasking because it's trying to run both of those programs at the same time. And they're both multi-threaded programs. So there was 20 threads running there in total. And the CPU just ran as quickly as it can, trying to uh, give the appearance it was doing multiple things at once. But of course it wasn't. It was actually just slicing the time between each one. Okay, now let's go over to a Raspberry Pi 3. Okay, so here I'm on a Raspberry Pi 3. Now the Raspberry Pi 3 is different because it has four cores. It's got a quad core processor. Now, first of all, I'm just gonna run the program exactly the same program as we had running on the Raspberry Pi Zero. And I want us to see here that actually it runs much, much quicker. It will come out at about 4.1 seconds. There we go. And that's because the core, the core's designs inside the Raspberry Pi 3 are just better. They're faster, it's clocked at a faster uh, speed and they're a better design. So actually it was just quicker doing exactly the same program and it was only running on one core. Now we're gonna run the same program again uh, but I've upped the number of prime numbers now to a million so that it we can get a bit longer to talk about what happened. So we'll run this program now. And what do we notice here? First of all, that it's running at 100%, okay, uh, on one core again. So the overall system load is actually only 25% because there are four cores and it's doing 100% on one core as it tries to run that non-threaded program to calculate those uh, million numbers 10 times in a row in a sequential in a sequential pattern. So it's it's maxing out one core and the other three cores are not doing anything. And that took about 29 seconds there, we can see from that timing. Now, we can now run the threaded version of the same program, again, now using a million numbers for to make it a bit longer. And if we hit go, the first thing we notice is, look at this, it's using now almost 400%. And the reason why it's saying 400% is because it's 100% of four cores. And now you can see here this finished much quicker, well, four times faster because it finished in 7.5 seconds uh, because it was using all four cores while it was doing it. So running a multi-threaded program on a multi-core uh, CPU allows the program to run much, much quicker. In fact, we can now do multi-processing and multi-threading by running in both windows here, these two programs. So let's run them as quick as we can. There we go. Now, first of all, notice we've got two running. Okay, and they're using about 200% of the CPU time each, which means they're using two cores each, but yet the overall system time is still up here at 100% because all four cores are being used. And of course, this will take about twice as long because of twice the work, and there we have it, 15.6 seconds, 15.6 seconds, because 
the programs were doing it together. And so that's an example of multi-processing of two programs running multi-threads and the cores were divided up as the best they could. Really, two cores were maxed out for one program and two cores were maxed out for the other program. So there we go, multi-processing, multi-threaded and multitasking all together. And there you have it, my explanation of multitasking, multi-threading and multi-processing. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and please share this video on social media. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.